Welcome to the Pharmacy Inspection Podcast, powered by LyceumCE.com, where we discuss topics related to both sterile and non-sterile compounding pharmacy in an effort to promote compliance and increase quality. Please welcome your hosts, Brian Prince and Seth DePasquale. Hi, this is Sethi Pasquale, board certified sterile compounding pharmacist. Yay, it is Friday, and that means another special edition of the Pharmacy Inspection Podcast. Every Friday, we look at a 43 to try to help us understand and learn more about compliance within sterile and, in this week, non sterile compounding pharmacy. So let's jump right in. The learning objectives for today's 43 by the end of this, you should be able to discuss the engineering control requirements for handling and compounding with hazardous drugs, list two agents that can be used to deactivate hazardous drugs, and discuss the four steps required to properly remove hazardous drugs from services and equipment. So in this week's 43, we're going to look at the importance of cleaning work and non-work services to prevent cross-contamination. What's interesting about this particular 43 is that the FDA doesn't note this on sterile products, but in operations, non-sterile compounding areas. Also, the 43 specifically mentions hazardous drugs, so there should be no question in your mind whether the FDA is looking for some, some compliance with USP 800. So let's take a look at the observation. It says, hazardous drugs were produced without providing adequate containment, segregation, and or cleaning of work surfaces, utensils, and or personnel to prevent cross-contamination. Specifically, non-dedicated work surfaces and utensils, including mortar, pestles, mixing spoons, spatulas, and glassware, are shared for production operations between hazardous and non-hazardous non-sterile drug products. In addition, you do not use deactivating agents for removal of hazardous ingredients on shared utensils. This includes the following drug products which were prepared and produced using the hazardous non-sterile production room. And it, and it lists um, several drug products that, that uh, contain the drug uh, tretinoin um, or Retin-A as, as it's uh, commercially known. And which falls under the cat, the NIOSH category of being a, a hazardous drug. So there's quite a bit of information packed into this short paragraph. First, the 43 mentions that drugs are produced without providing adequate containment. This suggests that perhaps the firm wasn't using containment ventilated enclosures or also known as powder hoods while compounding. They're also cited for having non-dedicated utensils and equipment for compounding with hazardous drugs. The hazardous drug in this case, again, being tretinoin. USP 800 specifically talks about non-sterile compounding and the requirements that must be followed. So this is out of USP 800. The CPAC, or Containment Primary Engineering Control, used for manipulation of non-sterile HDs must either be externally vented, preferred, or have redundant HEPA filter in series. And below that, I've put a little chart that basically talks about the engineering controls uh, that are required for non-sterile compounding. It, it, it says that uh, for the, the primary engineering control, you need an externally ventilated, uh, externally vented or redundant HEPA filter in series. For your secondary engineering control or your room, it also needs to be externally vented. It needs to have 12 air changes per hour and a pressure differential between negative 0.01 and 0.03, negative 0.03 inches water column. Now let's talk about the use of dedicated equipment and utensils. If you're compounding with hazardous drugs, all the materials and equipment you should be uh, you use should be dedicated specifically for HDs and not be used for non-HD compounding. USP mentions this specifically here. Disposable or clean equipment for compounding such as mortar, mortars and pestles and spatulas must be dedicated for use with HDs. This is in USP Chapter 800, uh, number 13 under compounding. 
Also, in the paragraph above this, it says clean equipment should be dedicated for use with HDs and should be decontaminated after every use. This is in USP Chapter 800, number 12, dispensing final dosage forms. Even the 483 talks about cleaning utensils, specifically citing that you do not use deactivating agents for the removal of hazardous ingredients on shared utensils. So what agent specifically is the agency talking about when they mention the term deactivating agent? A deactivating agent is one that renders the hazardous drug or residue inert, meaning it's inactive. And the specific agent that deactivates HDs are oxidizing agents such as peroxide formulations or sodium hypochloride. Here's another table from USB 800 that talks about all the steps that need to take place to properly deactivate, decontaminate, clean, and disinfect items or surfaces that may have come in contact with hazardous drugs. So this applies not just to your surfaces that you've potentially contaminated with hazardous drugs, but any of the equipment and utensils used as well. While the FDA may not specifically cite you for something where they quote directly out of 800, they're still concerned with cross-contamination between products. Even trace amounts of hazardous drugs and other formulations is just plain not acceptable. If you'd like a more in-depth post on the procedure for specifically cleaning up hazardous drug spills, I'd recommend checking out the post that I have here on the website. There is a link to it. I've also put in a video um, here at the bottom of this post that goes over uh, all the steps for cleaning up uh, a chemo spill. So um, yeah, check that out. Uh, it's, it's always good to come right to the website and check out what posts I have, what other information I have with these uh, podcasts, because it's not just this, uh, the podcast, there's usually other things that I, that I've posted in here and, and, and embedded. Um, so yeah, check that out, but I think that wraps up another 483 Friday for this week. And, uh, I just hope everyone has a great weekend and until next time, keep raising the bar. The pharmacy inspection podcast is powered by lyceumce.com where you can find engaging video-based continuing education programs, as well as a social community for pharmacists and technicians. Join one of the discussion groups or forums and post your questions to the group. Lyceum CE, where fun CE gets done.